we'll leave some space for questions at a, at a later stage. First of all, just to, to sum up a little bit what uh, Alexis has said, I think we are very much grateful for, for all the support UEFA has, and I think it's a, we see really clear commitment of, of UEFA to to promote the role of the disability access officer. We've heard yesterday as well about the infrastructure re regulations where, where UEFA is working on, on putting access even on a higher level. We've seen the, the videos as well from, from Equal Game, and clearly we have a strong support of, of UEFA as well in terms of communication. And at the same time, I think we are still in the beginning of the journey. We have had a good uh, development already, but we're in the beginning of the development of the disability access officer role. And so for me, it's even a, a bigger pleasure, and I think it's even more important to hear as well the voices of, of, of um, three persons who are really, for me, champions in the role of, of a disability access officer and who are as well not maybe the, c the biggest, biggest clubs in the world, but clubs uh, which, which maybe as well clubs we, who have not started yet working on this role can relate a little bit more. Um, so once again in the panel session we have uh, next to me directly Eva Zegrowski from Dynamo Zagreb. Um, she joined the club in 2011 as a new media expert and about uh, two and a half years ago she's now uh, working as, a, as well in addition to, to a role as a new media expert as a disability access officer. One further, Pilar Castillo Sid, who joined the club two years ago. Um, and then on the top right, uh, Elena Popova. Uh, you've heard she's just been appointed the, the national DO coordinator for, for the Russian Football Union, and she has a lot of experience on, a, on the national level of how we can promote the, the disability access officer role. So I'd like to ask a couple of questions to give you an understanding as well about the, the challenges they face and the, the motivations they have. So Eva, first of all, uh, what motivated the club uh, to appoint a DAO and why do you think a club should appoint a DAO and what are the main benefits? Okay, so first of all, hello everybody. Um, well, I think um, that the most important thing is uh, UEFA decided to, to put a uh, decision about the uh, role in uh, uh, licensing uh, regulations. So the club uh, Dinamo Zagreb decided to appoint me as a DAO, but not just because of uh, UEFA regulations. Uh, since we had a lot of uh, charity events and some programs for equality and diversity before that regulation, so it was uh, the only logical thing to continue in the same way. And uh, I was in charge of most of uh, our charity events and uh, programs for uh, promoting equalities, so I was honored to accept that role. Great. And what were the, the major activities you and the club have uh, organized with regards to access and inclusion in the past years? Uh, in the few past years, we had a lo lot of different projects. Uh, for example, uh, we started the first uh, ADC uh, in the history of Croatia. So we were the first club with the uh, ADC of the football match for our uh, blind and partially sighted fans. Uh, we had also the first time uh, in Croatia a stadium tour for blind and partially sighted fans. Um, we cooperate with the uh, Association of Deaf from Zagreb. It's the capital city of Croatia. Uh, we have some kind of workshops with them. We invite, invite them uh, to games at Maximer Stadium. Uh, we cooperate with a uh, few centers for rehabilitation. Uh, they are usually uh, visit uh, Dynamo games, uh, training sessions, uh, we have some workshops with them, uh, but we are not uh, trying to just invite them uh, to the stadium, we are trying to have a lot of uh, non-match day events, not just events, but workshops and some kind of educational programs. Uh, for example, we have an educational program for our young players from Youth Academy, uh, we are trying to raise awareness and to invite them to join programs and to understand better uh, all uh, obstacles that disabled people are facing in their daily life. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Elena, you've been very much involved into the development of the DO role in, in Russia throughout the last one and a half years. Can you maybe explain a little bit about the 
journey the RFU has taken and the activities the RFU has been doing to, to improve access and inclusion? Thank you. Hello. Hello, everybody. And um, for these one and a half years, we, are, we achieved a lot. And uh, first, we had um, a steward training that we held in May 2017. And there, uh, attended more than 100 people and after these trainings we received a lot of good feedbacks uh, about the, how important it was and um, it was necessary for them to know something new and uh, to get European experience. Uh, secondly, we we provided DO trainings uh, in the beginning of this year and uh, it was two days, <coughs> sorry, two days uh, trainings and for the first day it was dedicated to DOs and the second day we gathered uh, uh, DOs and SLOs together and um, we talked about the importance of the DO role and after this um, trainings as well we received uh, uh, feedbacks um, and it was important for them to clearly understand their roles in the clubs and um, um, well yeah <laughs> and I think just a couple of words of, uh, of my work uh, during this uh, one and a half years uh, one of the main goals was uh, um, raising um, attendance increasing attendance and um, I was Absolutely surprised, and it was uh, was amazing when we received for the opening match of the Luzhniki Stadium after the reconstruction. We received more than 1,200 requests, tickets requests, and um, um, it, it was just amazing experience because of this attendance. And after this match and after the World Cup, um, um, for now the average attendance um, is about 500 disabled people. That's really impressive, and I mean, you see, with a short in a short period of time, you've you've managed quite a lot. Yeah. Now, uh, to you and Pilar, and maybe for I didn't say before, Pilar will will speak in Spanish. Uh, so, if you want to put on your uh, translation devices, um, Pilar, you in the last uh, two years with the club, what have been the activities you've been organizing and planning now for the future? Pues como ha dicho antes Hochen, yo solo llevo do, dos años en, en este equipo y anteriormente no había tenido ningún contacto con, con la discapacidad. Entonces cuando llegué al Real Betis la primera sensación que tuve eh, fue la misma que se encuentran muchas personas con discapacidad en su vida diaria. Eh, ¿A qué realidad me refiero? No? Pues a la, gran, a la gran falta de inclusión social ¿no? y al número de barreras arquitectónicas con las que se encuentran en la sociedad. En este caso yo me lo encontré en, en mi estadio. Entonces, después de hacer un, después de trabajar y hacer un análisis en profundidad de, de todas las barreras o todas las cosas que hacen falta en el estadio, de, decidí trabajar en dos líneas, eh, una línea técnica y una línea social. En la línea técnica nos centramos en las barreras arquitectónicas, porque este era un grave problema. Además, nuestro estadio es muy antiguo, y tenía zonas del año 1972. Y además está ubicado dentro de la ciudad, lo que hacía también más difícil eh, poder trabajar. Eh, nos centramos eh, principalmente en las personas con movilidad reducida, pues cre creímos que, que eran los que le afectaban más esta, estas barreras. Queramos, antes de, de empezar a, a hacer infraestructura, eh, creamos un grupo de voluntarios le dimos charlas sobre discapacidad y atención y empezamos a trabajar todos los días de partido, ayudándole al acceso para, hasta que normalizáramos un poco la situación en el estadio. Eh, además, eh, aparte, nosotros en el estadio contábamos solo con dos ascensores y una rampa y la rampa tampoco contaba con, con la normativa vigente. Pero gracias a, durante estos dos años hemos hecho muchas reformas, como creación de rampas, ampliación de, de ascensores. Eh, nosotros teníamos el problema también de la visibilidad de las personas en silla de ruedas, que estaba justamente al mismo nivel que el resto de socios. Entonces, como se ha hablado aquí anteriormente, cuando las personas se levantaban, ellos no podían ver. Nosotros le decíamos, le invitamos a que se sentasen. Pero claro, el fútbol es muy irracional y en el momento que hay un gol o simplemente el balón cruza 
el medio campo ya se sobresaltan y se levantan, aunque después ellos mismos pedían perdón a, a los aficionados en silla de rueda, pero ya se habían perdido el gol o, o esa jugada. Entonces hemos hecho plataformas, los hemos elevado un, casi medio metro y eso ha superado eh, el, que ellos puedan ver mejor y seguir el partido. Todavía nos quedan más por hacer, pero ya hemos empezado a, a realizarla. También hemos creado entornos accesibles, la parte de taquillas, porque había muchos escalones y había que tenderlos en abajo, tenían que dar una vuelta muy grande para poder acceder a, a las taquillas y también la recepción del estadio. Hay un entorno mucho más accesible. Y también eh, en el parking exterior lo hemos asfaltado para que sea también mucho más fácil el, el poder ba eh, bajarse del coche y poder llegar al estadio. Todavía son muchas las cosas que tenemos que hacer, como he dicho, nos hemos centrado sobre todo en la parte técnica, en las personas con movilidad reducida, pero hay muchas más discapacidades en nuestro estadio, intelectual, sensorial, y todas, cada una de ellas también queremos eh, dotarlas y, y ayudarlas a que ellos también se sientan integrados en nuestro estadio. En eh, la parte social, lo primero que hicimos fue reunirnos con todo el colectivo con discapacidad, porque mmm, nadie mejor que ellos saben el problema que realmente existe, porque ellos son los que sufren cada día que van, que van a los partidos. Entonces ellos nos contaron sus problemas, qué mejorarían del estadio, y a mí personalmente esto me ayudó mucho, porque eh, no es lo mismo eh, yo, que, que no tengo ningún tipo de discapacidad ¿no? a la hora de poder acceder, que ellos que lo ven desde primera mano y me dicen exactamente cosas que yo quizás no, no vea o el resto de de mis compañeros. Además, también gracias a la, a la dirección deportiva, pudimos dar charlas a los jugadores del primer equipo y del segundo equipo de, de fútbol, al equipo de féminas de fútbol y a todos los alumnos de, de la escuela de fútbol de la Fundación. Porque aunque no lo creáis, los, los futbolistas también son muy importantes en este trabajo, no son porque eh, las personas con discapacidad van a verlo a ellos, van a ver su, cómo juegan, es su, es su pasión. Entonces ellos también tienen que formar parte, o sea, le invitamos a que cuando vienen a una persona con discapacidad se acercaran, se hicieran fotos con ellos, le firmaran autógrafos, nos acompañasen cuando vamos a visitar hospitales o centros con discapacidad. Es difícil, entiendo que no es muy fácil eh, poder contactar con, con los jugadores, pero bueno, nosotros le dijimos que es muy importante y con eso, que ellos pierden 10 o una hora de su vida, a las personas con discapacidad o bueno, al resto de personas les hace muy felices y les hace que ellos también son parte importante en este, en este colectivo, ¿no? en este club. Gracias a lot. I think it's great to see the, those changes already uh, within a short period of time. I'm looking forward to see future changes. Uh, Elena, once again, back to you. Um, with the FIFA World Cup, obviously, um, a topic of excellent inclusion has been quite a lot in the press. And I know you yourself uh, gave as well various interviews to, to media organizations uh, such as CNN. What do you see like an impact of this visibility on television in the news? Uh, of the topic of excellent inclusion and on, on, on disabled people in the country and what's the impact on, on the works of the uh, RFU? Well, uh, it was very important, it was very interesting because, as I said earlier, one of the main topics is uh, raising awareness. So by the mass media, especially like CNN, uh, it helps us to raise awareness. So uh, it will come to it'll bring it to um, increasing uh, attendance. So. Uh, on the CNN, I was shown as a disabled fan uh, going to the matches of the World Cup, and um, on this video it shows like uh, how a disabled person, uh, in my case, that is a wheelchair user, can go to the stadium, and how can uh, this person get the um, um, the services and facilities of the stadium and uh, it's very important because people can see this video and uh, understand that the stadium is welcome them and uh, they can easily go to the stadium and enjoy the football uh, like non-disabled person and um, to the RFU I think it's almost uh, also very important because um, it shows the interest of mass media and uh, we have a lot of good stories to tell and uh, that encourages us to work harder and uh, motivates to work even more on this topic. Thank you. Um, Pilar, maybe from your side, 
what was the impact on on the number of uh, of all the activities you mentioned on the number of disabled people attending your games? Eh, cuando yo comencé eh, había sobre unas 700 personas con discapacidad, entre las cuales contábamos con 28 personas en silla de ruedas. Eh, actualmente, bueno, en el estadio hay unos 50.000 50 socios y actualmente hay 1.100 personas con discapacidad con unas 56 sillas eh, y cada silla va con un acompañante gratuito. Eh, esto a mí personalmente eh, me hace muy feliz ¿no? de ver que, que quizá nuestro trabajo eh, se haya visto reflejado en, en este aumento de, de, de personal con, con discapacidad, es casi un 25-30% más. Great to see those positive developments. Um, Eva, oh, yesterday we've um, seen the video of Equal Game about Jan in Macedonia and the impact this video can have. What about you with your, your media background as well and communications background? The activities you do, the communication you do, what impact does this have on, on, on towards access inclusion? Well, well, first of all, I think that uh, raising awareness of the importance of uh, dis uh, disabled uh, fans integration is really important and we can do a lot of things by just uh, sharing different stories, uh, connecting with other organizations and individuals and that is the power of uh, social media and, and online media. Uh, I think that uh, very important is to share all good stories every club or national federation is making. Uh, it's important to, to give examples to others and uh, we have chance to share all stories uh, through social media uh, and sometimes when there is a lack of media interest in some topics, because they are not always interested in everything uh, we do, uh, we have own channels and we can uh, publish stories we want to, to share. And the reach is enormous and there is the great thing. That was the story with uh, Jane and it is a great example how can we use uh, our own channels to to raise awareness of um, integration of disabled fans and disabled people into football. Okay, great. Coming back now to the daily life of a disability access officer. Pilar, can you maybe explain a little bit about the how a daily uh, your daily job looks like? Sí. Um, mi, o sea, mi función principal es atender a, a todas las personas con, con discapacidad. Eh, para ello hay un número de teléfono y un correo electrónico en el cual ellos pueden contactar conmigo para explicar sugerencias, algún problema o reclamaciones. Que esta última apartado las reclamaciones al principio, bueno, al principio y todavía son, son bastantes. Esperamos poder reducirlas a medida que vayamos mejorando y haciendo más accesible nuestro estadio. Eh, aparte de los días del partido, también trabajo con el equipo de voluntarios que, que he hablado anteriormente. Eh, los distribuyo por las distintas zonas del estadio para que, para que ellos faciliten el acceso y ellos están desde dos horas antes, están todo el partido y una vez que finaliza el partido. Eh, además, mi departamento está incluido dentro de la, de la fundación de, del Real Betis y también lo compagino con, con labores sociales, ¿no? como la visita a asociaciones, a hospitales, a colegios y también eh, a lo largo de, de la temporada eh, hacemos muchos actos eh, relacionados con la discapacidad. Por ejemplo, el próximo partido que tenemos en casa, que es el 2 de diciembre, que es el día anterior al 3 de diciembre, el Día Internacional de la Discapacidad, pues vamos a orientarlo exclusivamente a, a este colectivo. Eh, hay una promoción para ese partido en el cual las personas con discapacidad pues, pueden adquirir entradas eh, más baratas a un, a un precio menor. Y aparte, los niños que van a acompañar a, a los jugadores van a ser niños con, con discapacidad. Eh, también queremos hacer más acciones, pero todavía estamos trabajando en ello. Aparte, eh, mi trabajo, imagino que todas, o sea, mis compañeras que todos estamos aquí, estamos en continuo contacto con el resto de, de compañeros, ¿no? especialmente con instalaciones, 
que como ayer decía John Dister, somos muy pesados porque cada vez que nos venga a aparecer siempre piensan que vamos a, a pedir algo, ¿no? Eh, entonces siempre nos ven como, como los pesados de, de la oficina. También con el departamento de taquillas, ¿no? Para, para ver el tema de, de socio y de atención a, al socio. Son los departamentos con los que estoy más conectado, ¿no? con los que más participo y desde aquí le mando un, un saludo a todos porque sé que en la medida de lo posible intentan a, eh, ayudarme en todo lo que pueden. Yeah, I think it's very important to have the support of the, the other departments. Now, Eva, coming back to you, what do you think can a club do to, to ensure you have an effective DO and really improve the match day experience of, of disabled fans? Well, as you mentioned, um, the communication is a really important part. So uh, uh, DAO should start some project and make some ideas, but of, of course uh, uh, DAO should communicate everything with uh, supervisors, with uh, clubs board, with all other colleagues, uh, stadium manager, security department, and the communication is probably the most important part uh, of the whole project. Um, Of course, there should uh, be collecting feedback of disabled fans and disabled supporters groups also, because uh, we can uh, get their feedback to know uh, what can we improve, uh, not just about the stadium access, but all uh, projects and programs we are organizing. And that's it, communication. Great. <laughs> and I know you're communicating as well with a lot of disability NGOs. Maybe you can... Tell us a little bit about the benefits you see uh, in the collaboration with disability NGOs. Well, um, benefit is uh, we can get to know uh, disabled supporters in our local community because we are a small country and uh, there is still a lack of information for disabled supporters. Uh, most of them are not well informed about uh, are they able to come to attend a football match, uh, stadium access, uh, information about tickets. So co communication and cooperation with NGOs uh, are helping us to get to know them and to collect their feedback on match day experience and everything uh, other we do. Okay, thank you. Elena, I know you have a slightly different role working on, the, on a national level. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about the, the difficulties you, you might face as well in the collaboration with clubs. Yeah, uh, you know, some clubs are really open and it's uh, very easy to deal with, but uh, some clubs are closed. It's difficult to, to have a communication with them, <laughs> but um, uh, as well it's very important to find a motivated person and uh, sometimes when you have this person, uh, this unfortunately this person doesn't get the said support from, from the um, club, from the ma uh, club management and um, the solution is uh, DO trainings that we had and it really um, had an impact of a uh, number of disabled uh, people attending stadiums. Great. Um, talking as well about the, the challenges uh, the club DOs face, um, Pila, maybe you, I know you've been recently looking, for example, into audio descriptive commentary and was uh, postponed to, to the next season. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit either about the challenges you face as a DO. Sí, efectivamente, en esta temporada. Eh, Hochen y Michael Ray se pusieron en contacto con, conmigo para explicarnos el tema del audio, el comentario audio descriptivo, que es muy interesante. Y yo lo, lo comenté a, en mi club, ¿no? Y, pues, sí, es cierto que por el momento lo, ha, lo han dejado para realizar un poco más adelante, pero yo voy ahí, estaré luchando para que se haga lo, lo más pronto posible. Eh, nosotros, eh, yo al principio de cada temporada hacemos un plan estratégico en el cual valoramos todas las acciones que queremos hacer para, para dicha temporada. Luego lo presentamos al resto de departamentos y entre todos se, se, se valora si, su desarrollo, ¿no? si se van a realizar todas. También lo que estaba diciendo antes Elena, eh, para nosotros también es, es, es difícil el, el poder llevar todas estas acciones a, eh, adelante, ¿no? porque también estamos en continuo 
discusión, ¿no? por así decirlo, ¿no? o en una pequeña lucha con, con nuestros directivos, porque en el club, como todos sabemos, eh, son 50.000 socios, ¿no? eh, hay, hay muchísimo, muchísimas personas y nosotros somos, un, al fin y al cabo, somos un colectivo reducido. Entonces, tenemos que seguir luchando para que, para que este, aunque sea un colectivo reducido, pero que tenga y pueda disfrutar de los mismos derechos que el resto, ¿no? entonces muchas veces sí nos cuesta más trabajo. Eh, también mi gran desafío fue eh, concienciar a, a los dirigentes de nuestro club de la necesidad de la figura de un responsable de, de discapacidad, ¿no? debido a la, a, a la gran barrera y a la falta de inclusión que, que existía. Había una falta de empatía y de desconocimiento hacia este colectivo. Muchos de nuestros dirigentes, por ejemplo, no sabían que teníamos socios ciegos. Pero gracias a la gran receptividad que tuvo nuestro Consejo de Administración, eh, hemos podido hacer todas estas cosas en, en estos dos años y además ellos no, nos animan a que sigamos luchando y, y mejorando en este aspecto. Thanks, Pilar, for pushing this topic constantly within your club. Eva, maybe if you like have one advice to, to any club who wants to start working this topic. Can you give us, share one ad advice from your side? Uh, the advice would be that uh, we need to open up to disabled fans and disabled people and we should not wait for them to contact the club or the organization because uh, there should be no excuses like stadium uh, obstacles and uh, non-accessible stadiums. Uh, there is a lot of things we can do beside the infra infrastructure and if we cannot change some uh, things about the stadiums and stadium accessibility there are a lot of different things we can do to attract more disabled people to attend the football match great pillar any tip you can give and maybe tell us a little bit about the learnings you had throughout the last years Pues como eh, he dicho, ¿no? eh, yo llevo dos años y anteriormente no había tenido contacto de, de cerca con, con este colectivo. Y lo más importante, ¿no? que, o lo que creo que, que para mí personalmente más he aprendido en estos dos años es conocerlos a ellos personalmente. O sea, eh, nosotros todo el mundo sabemos que tienen muchos problemas en su vida diaria eh, a la hora de... De, de hacer cualquier cosa, ¿no? de, incluso de, de ir por la ciudad, de enfrentarse a cualquier problema diario, como es a lo mejor sacar dinero de un cajero o ir al supermercado, eh, siguen luchando eh, por ir a, a los estadios y, y, y tener la pasión por, por su equipo. Entonces, la pasión que ellos eh, demuestran o, o desarrollan a la hora de, de querer venir al estadio, de luchar, porque porque lo tratemos de, de la misma manera y que no tenga que, que salvar estas barreras, eh, la verdad que, que me motiva bastante. También a, a la pregunta de, de qué es lo que el consejo que yo le daría a una persona, que, a una persona responsable de discapacidad que acabara de empezar, eh, sobre todo que se pusiera en contacto con, con otras personas que ya lleven más tiempo. Eh, esto es muy importante porque quizás ellos, eh, con la experiencia, eh, han llegado a sitios o han descubierto formas de trabajar que, que una persona que, que de primer contacto no, no se le ocurre. Por ejemplo, yo aquí que en la conferencia he, he estado hablando con, con compañeros de, de aquí de equipo y de clubes españoles como Albert de Barcelona y Marcela, ay, ahora me acuerdo. Marcela. Y Marcela del Atlético de Madrid y allí estuvimos entre todos hablando y compartiendo ideas y es cierto que, que muchos de nosotros llegamos a, a la misma conclusión, ¿no? al final tenemos los lo mismos problemas. Pero bueno, aún así eh, el coloquio y el, y, el, y el comparto de ideas hace que, que nos podamos ayudar y que entre todos podamos hacer que, que todos los clubes sean más inclusivos. Yeah, I think as as we've heard in the last days, the sharing of experiences is very important, and we heard as well yesterday about sharing negative experiences. Elena, I, I know you you're quite active football supporter, attending a lot of uh, games yourself. Maybe can you tell us a little bit about your negative experience as well and maybe how this can be turned for club efforts into a positive experience? Um, I would have liked to talk about the negative experience, but yes, unfortunately we had. Last year we went uh, to the UEFA um, Champions League game 
And uh, unfortunately, we couldn't find accessible seats and uh, nobody could help us. And uh, we spent a lot of time looking for the special seats and the accessible entrance. Um, it was really difficult. We uh, almost uh, were late for the match. But um, and then I heard um, that uh, for now this club has a DO and uh, also had a, a DO trainings and that uh, also impact, impact on the number of disabled pe uh, people. And uh, the most important that uh, they receive, and we receive at the cafe, uh, receive really good uh, feedbacks uh, after that uh, day of trainings, and the situation has changed. That's really great. Thank you. Um, back again to, to Eva. We've heard you're, you're like... Uh, having two roles at the same time, working as a new media expert and as a DO, how do you manage your priorities and what besides of, uh, nevertheless, as, as you have all the, uh, that work, what motivates you to continue? Yeah, it's a, it's a <coughs> I'm sorry. It's a little bit hard, but it's also challenging. Um, I am honored to be a club's DO and uh, I don't find it difficult because I have enough time to manage both roles and it's even easier for me because I can uh, combine those two things, organizing um, uh, activities for disabled fans uh, and disabled people as well as uh, connect that with uh, first team players, uh, communicate everything through social media and it's really challenging and I think um, we are uh, successful because uh, by organizing uh, some activities in the past few years, uh, we made some uh, social changes. And for example, until uh, 2015, we had f about 10 or 20 disabled supporters at Dynamo game. And now we have um, 150 blind fans, uh, deaf fans, uh, fans with uh, different kind of learning disabilities and I think that is um, a huge success for the club. So it's not hard for me to do both roles and I really enjoy it because I think I can do and give a lot to the club and to the local community. Great to hear, thank you. Mm, Jelena, I mean for you with the, with the World Cup as well it has been a really busy, busy year with a lot of activities. Can you maybe mention just one or two highlights and any wishes you have for the future? Highlights? Uh, I think I could talk about two. That is um, equality and attendance. Because attendance was uh, was enormous and uh, all the time we went to the stadium it was full. and. Um, that, that was amazing and we could see different people in the wheelchair users and partially side people blind deaf and, and uh, many other people and that that's really amazing and uh, we are also waiting for these people on the um, Russian championship games and the uh, Russian national team games so uh, that was amazing and um, I, I, I would like to tell a story short story but it wasn't about the World Cup but it was uh, like a part of my work uh, um, and we're talking about the commu communication with you and uh, sh uh, sh talk about how important it was it is to communicate with disabled fans and I had uh, have an amazing story um, I had a talk with the nine years old uh, children, uh, kids, sorry, and um, he's a passionate fan of football. He knows everything about football, I think, even you and me and all of us together. But he had a dream. He, did, he had a dream of um, attending El Clasico. And um, for two years, uh, he made his wish for Santa Claus and every year and uh, of any opportunity he had, he just uh, asked God or Santa Claus or anybody, just help me to get to El Clasico. And uh, you know how, how difficult it is to get tickets for European uh, games and uh, especially on this uh, games on this level. And uh, for two years, we tried to get these tickets and um, Finally, this May, uh, one person who is also attending this conference, uh, he helped us and, 
it's just unforgettable. When you see the eyes of this kid when he is attending legendary Camp Nou, and he's attending El Clasico, and he, he sees Messi and uh, Ronaldo and other players, legendary play players, and uh, it was just amazing. He, his bright eyes, it is, is something that I will never forget. And uh, I think that is our work, that is, that is the main aim of what we are working for. And um, that is like uh, motivate to work and to help uh, children and uh, other people get to their dreams. And we know that uh, football, football is amazing and football can change lives. So, absolutely. Thanks. Pilar, uh, having the, the conference here in Spain and having as well some Spanish fans and representatives from, from clubs and, and uh, uh, NGOs uh, present here with us today. Um, do you have maybe any final message you want to share with us or any wishes you have for the future? In primer lugar, agradeceros a toda vuestra asistencia que nos acompañe en esta mañana. Porque gracias a estos encuentros también hace que, que, que nosotros responsables eh, aprendamos, ¿no? Yo también recuerdo que al principio cuando comencé y me hablaron de café, no tenía ni idea. Aparte, café se escribe igual que café en español. Y a mí me creía que era una empresa de, de café o de venta online. Y cuando ya realmente me metí en la página web y vi de, de qué se trataba, para mí era todo un descubrimiento porque lo desconocía. Y seguro que hay muchísimos eh, clubes que no, ya no solo de primera división, sino a lo mejor de, de segunda también, que desconoce realmente que, que CAFE o que la UEFA tiene este trabajo tan, tan duro eh, para ayudar a, a, a formalizar, ¿no? a normalizar la, la accesibilidad y la inclusión en todos los estadios. Entonces, yo animaría a que realmente este problema grave y crónico que, que sufren las personas con discapacidad realmente se puede solucionar si entre todos, entre todas las organizaciones y personas, eh, eh, tanto a nivel nacional como europeo, eh, nos apoyamos y hay alguna especie de legislatura o legislación que realmente apoye para que podamos tener más fuerza y así apretar a, a nuestros dirigentes. Thank you very much. Now I open the floor to you if you have any questions to, to our panelists. Maren Grübner, Technische Universität Dortmund, FC Schalke 04. Ich habe zwei, drei Fragen. Einmal, ähm, welche Grund, also es wird jetzt sehr häufig von Menschen mit Beeinträchtigung gesprochen, ähm, dass sich äh, mit Problemen auseinandergesetzt wurde. Ähm, inwieweit äh, wird Behinderung bestimmt? Ähm, wir haben auf der einen Seite die ICF, die International Classification of Functional Disability and Health, äh, wo sich die UN-Behindertenrechtskonvention auch orientiert, um die, äh, den Behinderungsbegriff offen zu halten. Ähm, und auf der anderen Seite, ich sage mal, für Deutschland haben wir eine nationale Gesetzgebung, wo es enger gestrickt ist. Also wie wird das in den einzelnen Ländern geregelt, vor allem wenn wir mit, von Standards sprechen. Ähm, dann würde mich mal interessieren, wie die Workshops konkret aussehen, zum Beispiel Thema Sicherheit. Ähm, werden da Übungen durchgeführt? Um, und welchen beruflichen Background bringen die einzelnen Behindertenfernbeauftragten mit? Also sind die irgendwie in der, kommen die aus der sozialen Arbeit oder um, ja, welchen Background bringen sie dann uh, mit? Und um, auch nochmal zum Thema Workshop. Uh, gerade in jedem Land ist die politische Lage eine andere. Kriegt man da auch ein politisches Handwerkzeug mit, wie man mit Politikern, mit Vorständen und sowas um, spricht? Also würde ich mal spannend finden. Eva, if you want to maybe start. Uh. Yeah, so uh, I can say that uh, we have some meetings with uh, local government. Uh, we still don't have training sessions uh, in Zagreb, but uh, I would like to say that I, I think there is no unique rule for every club and every organization or national federation because you need to, uh, to think about your surrounding and your local community and maybe you can achieve some things 
uh, that will be success for your local community and your club and with uh, integration of disabled people. But I think it's not the same for every country and every city and every club. It depends on uh, how big is your club, uh, your local community, uh, interest of disabled fans. But of course, uh, there should be uh, communication with local government, especially, for example, we have uh, the city stadium and it's really hard to work on stadium accessibility, so uh, we are not able to change some things at the stadium, but there should be uh, that dialogue uh, between organization, in my case, uh, football club and government, and of course, uh, there should be a workshop for all clubs, workshop uh, on the national level, but we are still, uh, we are still planning something, so we need to work a lot on that case. Pilar or Eva, whoever feels more comfortable, maybe you want to answer on the question how close you work linked to the, the national regulations? Yo en el tema un poco de, de normativa no no tengo la suficiente, el suficiente conocimiento, como quizá a lo mejor mis compañeros o algunos de los que estáis aquí, pero nosotros, o sea, la normativa que cumplimos realmente es la, la normativa que, que actualmente hay de sobre edificaciones y, y construcciones en general. Eh, yo eh, utilizo mucho la guía que, que pone a nuestra disposición CAFE eh, para evitar sobre todo el tema de barreras arquitectónicas, pero... No tenemos una legislación, por así decirlo, que obligue en el ámbito de futbolístico a, a llevar a cabo esta medida o, o a obligar al club a que esto a, hay que hacerlo así. O sea, nos centramos un poco más por, por la legislación a nivel nacional, pero de, de construcciones. ¿Hay otras preguntas de la audiencia? Yes, I have a question for Mr. Angelo Poulos. Um, you mentioned uh, the, the rule in the club licensing and financial fair play regulations about having a DAO for every club that wants to play European football. Uh, isn't it a good idea to extend the rule also to all national associations who want to play uh, in national team competitions? So yes, this is obviously a very good idea, but um, how this system works is that it's implemented by the national associations on the clubs. We don't actually have any, how do you say, uh, we cannot impose this on the national association. It has to come from their own volition. Of course, we encourage it, uh, especially through the work CAFE does, but we cannot impose this on them. It has to come from them. As we've seen maybe earlier in the presentation, like at the moment um, there's basically like an international license, which is the UEFA license, and there's this national license, and approximately two-thirds of all national associations have put it into their national nation, uh, license as well, uh, obliging clubs as well, that not only those who want to participate in European competitions, but that every club has to have a, a dedicated disability access officer. Any further questions? Ива, вы сказали, что вы э, сотрудничаете с организациями для привлечения болельщиков. Как э, вы э, конкретно это делаете? Э, распространяете в СМИ или какие-то другие есть возможности? Не могли бы вы рассказать? Okay, okay, it's working. Uh, so we communicate, uh, we have uh, meetings with them 
So uh, the biggest problem in Croatia is that disabled fans and disabled organizations and people from organizations are not well informed about their possibilities. So they are not uh, most of, for example, blind uh, fans, blind and partially sighted, they are not informed, they are able to attend Dinamo football match. So we try to cooperate with organizations for the, from the local community. Uh, we have uh, meetings with them, we explain them the whole process, uh, uh, ADC, uh, how it's working, uh, everything about tickets, how they can access the stadium, and that is not just with uh, uh, blind fans, but it's for all other fans. So we use, we, uh, I usually call organizations, appoint a meeting, and sometimes they have some new ideas and sometimes we just invite them to join, not just match, but uh, we have uh, training sessions for kids with learning disabilities, for example, for example once a week. And um, the most important thing is to communica communicate and not just through media, but in person. Okay. Thank you. Um, we are running out of time, so maybe just to, to sum up a little bit the, the discussion we heard, I think, um, first of all, the disability access officer role is a very much rewarding role from an emotional point of view. And uh, I mean, it's very interesting as well because you work with all the, the different uh, stakeholders. I think uh, it's very important that the DO is somebody who's really, really passionate and all who we had on stage uh, here today are really good examples of this to be really an example uh, for other colleagues in, in, in the clubs or in the federations. Uh, we've heard about the importance of working with differently disabled fans to listen to their needs, work together with disability NGOs. Uh, we've heard all the, the good efforts uh, UFA is putting all into practice to, to push this role. We know as well that we are in the beginning of the journey, so really looking forward to, to more clubs um, joining and more clubs appointing a disability access officer. But I think what should always motivate you is, first of all, the, the stories you hear, but as well the positive results you see. You've heard like the, the number of disabled fans uh, has quickly, within a short period of time, increased quite a lot in, in all of those three uh, clubs or countries. So it's really interesting for a club to, to work as well from that point of view onto the topic. So thanks to, to all of your, you, first of all, for, for your great work and for being part of the, the panel. And yeah, we thanks a lot to, to everybody. And we're going to continue now with the next presentation. Thank, Thank you. you.